افوض امری اللہ ان اللہ بصیر بلاباد ولا حول ولا قوت الا بلّہ علی العظیم حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل نعم المولا و نعم النصیر اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین بارق الخلائق اجمعین والصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على النبي الأمي المكي المدني القرشي الهاشمي الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرض بأبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين لعنت الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله الحكيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الخبيثات للخبيثين والخبيثون للخبيثات والطيبات للطيبين والطيبون للطيبات اولئک مبرعون مما یقولون لہم مغفرت و رزق کریم صلوات علی محمد و آل محمد رسپیکٹڈ برادرز و سسٹرز ان دی سیریز آف لیکچرز دس ایئر وی چوز دی ٹاپک آف فیملی سٹرکچر ان اسلام وچ از کوائٹ اے ہاٹ ٹاپک and a topic which we require to discuss about and which time is better than the month of Muharram in which we discuss the issues which very important to each one of us for elders, for youngsters, for children especially for those who are ready to get married and those who are already married and this is something which we need to focus on and as I mentioned that we are discussing here not just to increase our knowledge. We try our best to apply these principles and these prescriptions made by Quran and Ahadith and great ulamas so we can have a good life in this world, a successful life in this world. We can produce the children which they can make a tremendous changes in our society and also we can uphold the values of our family and the family in Islam is focused more because the root of all goodness and also the root of all evils exists from the family if the family is successful if the family is religious if the family is modest, if the family is maintained the principles of Islam, that family is a prosperous family and that family comes out of this family all goodness and people can expect any goodness from this kind of family. And God forbid, if family loses the control and loses the values and the principles of Islam and not upholding those in their day to day life, then all evils in our society comes from such family. So if we strengthen our family and family structure, then automatically we can expect good from coming generations and inshallah we can reform our society as well as we can reform the entire world. We discuss the importance of the topic in the first lecture and how the shaitan is trying to destroy our families and targeted the families as a root for, for all uh, the problems in our societies and then we discuss in second lecture about uh, the how to start the family the family starts from uh, spouse selection 
and we discuss some of the criterions which is required and which is very important for spouse selections. We discuss that uh, who has the authority for selection and also we discuss and how we have to approach the direct approach, indirect approach and how the parents and elders can support their youngsters and how they can arrange uh, the best marriage according to principles of Islam and also uh, we discuss uh, the criterions and we came to this point that we have uh, we selected eight criterions of select selecting spouse and we try to explain in detail each one of those and among those eight is the religiousness and we discussed last night and then the second one was morality and how we have to maintain it uh, this is the one of the very important criteria and then the third one was nobility of the family so because both the families once they get married the both families are involved and their nobility is effect on each other and we discuss somehow and we'll continue from here and inshallah we try our best to complete this section of family structure which is this spouse selection and the criterion part and inshallah uh, we hope that our brothers and sisters will pay attention and those who are listening and viewing this uh, lecture later on try their best not to just gain the knowledge rather apply it because this is the root once we start our family life in a good manner in a good, with good attitude uh, upholding the principles of Islam automatically we can expect the better generation the fruit automatically we can have in a best form concerning the third point nobility of the family certain hadith we noted down here by our noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wa he mentioned that tazawwaju fil hajar is salih fa inna al irqa dasasun our noble prophet mentioned that marry from a decent family for genealogy affect very much you cannot avoid this element of genealogy you cannot alter it genes are not something which can we can alter in a short term yes there are certain attitudes we can alter in genealogy but this will happen only after few generations like in Islam it is mentioned that the person who born generous they continue generosity in their family life in their progeny the person with attitude of uh, what you call the being miser they continue in their generations but in Islam we have a very good uh, what we call the riyaza meaning uh, purification of self purification once we have Sakhawat, the word Sakhawat means generosity. This is normally there in, in the gene. But there is another word which is mentioned in tradition, especially in self building, Islamic self building. There is a book written by Ayatollah Amini. The title is Self Building. I recommend all my youth, especially, to go through with it. It's available online. It's a very nice book. How you can build yourself in all aspects, especially in terms of spirituality. He mentioned the steps and how you have to start and how you have to take the peak and then how you can make yourself a complete person, closer to a perfect person. In this, one of the formulas of self-building is Tasakho. Please pay attention. Once we have the Sakhawat, Sakhawat means generosity. To be generous is not so easy because it's passed through from the generations. But sometimes you can change your gene in this term. 
by forcing yourself to be generous. That is called tasakho. Meaning, if you want to donate something, it is hard for you to donate because you possessing this attitude from your father, maybe forefathers, passed through through the gene. You can't change it. But Islam says, yes, you can change it during the course of years and maybe uh, after a generation. How? You have to force yourself to be generous. Once you are donating, you feel bad. You don't feel pleasant. But you have to force yourself that we have to generate it now. We have to donate it. You donate it. Keep donating. One time. Second time. Third time. Several times. After a while, it becomes your habit. And you won't feel bad while you are donating. We saw many persons in our life that in, in the early stage of life, they were miser. It was hard for them to donate a penny, a dollar, a cent, for any cause. Even for themselves, it was hard for them to spend for their own family. But later on, slowly they tried to change this attitude and they became a generous person. So in the, Islam, in the history also, we have many with this attitude and they change their attitude. So there are certain things which we can change. But it is hard to change those things in, in a short term. So while you are selecting spouses, you have to choose these things, that which family they are belong to. So the family is, cons is very much important. From which family and what type of food you need, what type of uh, the progeny you want. According to that, you need to select your spouse. Let me pause here and uh, give an example of our history, which is very appropriate for this uh, gathering and these majalis and Muharram. After the martyrdom of Lady Fatima alayha, Imam Ali والسلام, was feeling loneliness. It was hard for Imam Ali to lose Fatima. You know that uh, there is a beautiful hadith which mentioned that the same about the spouse selection. Uh, if Imam Ali was not created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we had no kuf, no equal partner for Lady Fatima. And the same thing mentioned that if Fatima was not created, there is no equal partner for Imam Ali. So they made for each other. That's why we call this marriage occurred on heaven, not on earth. It is announcement on the earth. So this is the marriage, the, the, the lady of light and the Amirul Mu'mineen, the master of the, the believers. They come together with a special arrangement by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But after the departure of Lady Fatima, it was hard for Imam Ali to find a spouse like Fatima. It was impossible. Yes, he married many, but none of them were equal to Fatima. And he went to, this is the very important narration, he went to his brother. His brother was Aqil. His brother was expert in genealogy. In some of the Arabs, even now we have some are very expert. If you mention few names of your forefathers, they can relate you from which clan you are and from which genealogy you are. Of course, we have to go through up to a level that they have the formulas and they have the, uh, the, uh, the great personalities uh, genealogy, right? He was very expert in genealogy, so he asked Aqil that, Oh my brother, I want you to select a woman for me from a clan to which I need a bravest person as my son. It means what? What type of children you want from where you need to start? You need to start from selection of your spouse. What type of children you need, you want? According to that, you need to select your spouse. And here, Imam Ali mentioned the clan, the family. The family background is very important in the behavior and attitude of the children. So, 
If you want a brave children, you need to find out the woman from the brave family. The family members matters a lot. The, the family attitudes and their behavior is in fact directly in the spouse selection. So once you are selecting your spouse, then you need to consider this as well. And as our noble prophet mentioned in similar hadith, Undur fi shay'in this is very important hadith. Undur fi ayya shay'in tada'u waladak fa inna al-irqa dassasun. Investigate very carefully and as to where you will place your child. Where you will place your child. Investigate carefully. For genealogy affects very much. So according to what type of children you need, you have to select your spouse. Why the family is so important? These are the factors. Why the family is so important? First, the, the, this person is part of the family. You cannot take, you cannot separate. You know, there are some of the, the quarrels, some of the differences may occur in the family life, in, in couple differences. Is that you? I don't want your family members to meet with you. I don't want to send you to your family. I don't want such matters arises in the family. So why not you select your spouse, choose your spouse from a family which brings the dignity for you, at least compatible with your family. So then lots of the differences you may cut down right here. I'm not telling that this is the only criterion. So we come to discuss uh, overall compatibility, how we have to maintain the overall compatibility. But this is also a very good element to look after and we have to maintain that. Why? Because this person is belong to a family, you cannot separate from the family. And even if you do not have anything to do with them, with the family, you can say that, okay, I married to the girl or I married to the boy. Nothing to do with the family. Even you don't need to do it, nothing to do with your, their family, but they need to do something with you. They won't live with just, just like that. So somehow you are associated with the family. You cannot deny this part. So the family is very important to be uh, considered in choosing and selecting spouse. Their good or bad name and reputation remains attached to the person. You cannot detach this. If sometimes if their children do something wrong, people may you know put a word that because this this person is belong to that family automatically we, we could expect it we had such expectation from that so these things comes after in when you have the children people may talk bad about them their qualities and peculiarities have a effect upon the future of the children because children carries the family name both from the girl side and as well as the boy side there is another hadith by our noble prophet. He said, choose a proper and suitable place for your semen. Because children become similar to their maternal uncle. Normally, if it, it has been seen that the children, they love their maternal uncles more than their paternal uncles. It's not a formula, but normally they are dragged to that. The, maybe the mother's love and mother's extra uh, affection attract them. I don't know. Somehow, this is the nature. The, they attract more towards the maternal uncles than the paternal uncles. So, you have to be careful both sides, the boy side and the girl side, while you're choosing, select the families. And also, we have a uh, the hadith, the prophet of Islam stood to deliver a speech and said, while he was standing for a speech, he said, Oh people, beware of the, the greenery growing upon a dung hill. He was asked, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what is the greenery on the dung hill? He replied, a beautiful woman, raised and brought up in a bad nursery. Nursery means here the family. The, the, the girl looked very beautiful, maybe reputable, maybe good in behavior and conduct, but unfortunately nurtured in, in a bad environment. Someday it will affect. Family is not a something like a month or, or a year. Family, normally, it's a, it's a norm, is for a lifetime. 
once you select your spouse and you plan to have the start your family you have to think of lifetime and unfortunately nowadays this became norm that oh no in the the uh, the temporary marriage we come to discuss about this issue temporary marriage is just a solution for certain problems it's not a permanent solution it's not something that is ideal for youths or of our start a family this is a solution for a temporary problems that's why we say temporary and temporary itself it shows it shows that this is not permanent so we should not go for this for instance for, for inception we have to plan for permanent marriage yes for certain problems this is a solution and inshallah on its own time we discuss about this more now the fourth criterion which is mentioned and already we discussed just we mentioned the fourth which is very important to be clear is reason it has to be some sort of compatibility in reasoning in both the, the girl and the boy the basic condition for both the both of them this is not something we have to expect from one side not the other side Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam salawat He mentioned in this hadith that iyyakum wa tazwijul humaqa fa inna suhbatuha bala'un wa waladuha diya It's very important hadith you know obviously we expect such wisdom words from Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam he said avoid marrying a stupid person from both side since her company is bow calamity or distress and her children are also wasted stupidity is something that you know it will affect in the children automatically automatically directly it has been seen it has been experienced why to be noted that we need to be careful about the education and the wisdom are two different things some of us mix up with this maybe a person is highly educated but still stupid not having wisdom but there is a person is not having any education the formal education i mean but he is wise enough we had many persons in different societies i have experience of meeting persons who had no education at all they were not able to even sign but the words they speak is valuable the family they maintained was moral model how because their top floor was working good though they had no literacy though they had no proper education but their mind was working good that is called wisdom so wisdom is different than education so there are many who are who are highly educated but they are not wise enough but there are many who are wise enough but they are not well educated but if education comes with wisdom that is something highly appreciated and that is the ideal but we should not mix up with these two things do not deceive by just education think of wisdom as well let me give an example uh, i don't name any person it was a very great personality in recent years maybe couple uh, decades before and he received a very uh, reputable reward similar to nobel prize and he became very famous globally and he was in appearance he was not looking good he was ugly in other many you can say but you know i don't define beauty in just faces in appearances we have several kinds of beauty the person who whose conduct is good is defined in islam as a beauty the person is his behavior how we can define the beauty with iman and behavior and conduct that is the main beauty not the face and not the appearance we had the examples that bilal was not much beautiful he was not smart and even he was not able to pronounce well 
But Rasulullah selected him and given to him a, a, a highest position. You know, Muazzin at that time was close to assistant of the Rasulullah. And whoever want to meet Rasulullah, they had to pass through. And it was hard for Arabs. They were feeling the dignity of themselves. They said, how come we have to seek permission of the, the Bilal to meet you? And even he was not able to pronounce properly. He was pronouncing, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah instead of Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. And Rasulullah replied, the seen of Bilal in Shinun illallah. While Bilal says, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Allah hears, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. So beauty is not appearance alone. Beauty is conduct and iman and behavior. He was ugly in appearance, but he was wise enough. He was well educated, well reputed, and he acquired the prize as well. He became very famous. It was a very beautiful lady from Pakistan. She wrote a letter to him asking and giving a proposal that why not we get married? I'm very beautiful. And though you are ugly, but you are wise, you are well educated and well reputed. So we can have children. They can take wisdom from you and beauty from me. It's a good deal. Then that wise man wrote back to her that what if the children receive the reverse? If they take ugliness from me and stupidity from you, and what happens? So there is no guarantee that they take something particular from father and particular from mother. So we have to be careful about these things. So we should not look on one thing and leaving the other aspects of our life. So we have to look overall compatibility. Then only we can have a nice fruits. Nowadays, you know, unfortunately, everything we are altering, the crafting in our uh, agriculture, you know, they take one uh, pay for one uh, branch from uh, one tree and they uh, graft with another one that is called grafting right and they produce a new fruit and uh, by this way they produce a different things but finally we don't know what what's really what is the mango what is the the apple and you know, they mix up everything that is not pure nowadays now they are creating a new breed you know this is good to know that uh, this is the shaitanic uh, actions the Zion is doing it normally Muslims they slaughter animal and they Muslims um, preferably they choose the uh, the ram and sheep what they did they crossed ram with the pig and they brought a new breed and so which one you select it's hard to identify is a pig or ram that's what this world is messed, messed up totally. So, but we should not try it in our genealogy. And at least we have to safeguard our human nature. Human race not supposed to play by these Zionist uh, the hands. And we have to preserve this. So we have to go through it. The Iman and ethics and akhlaq and behavior and conduct, all these things so we can have, we can preserve the human race at least uh, in this manner. So meaning of reason as defined by Imam Sadiq al-Islam is quite different. And what normally people think is totally different than this. Pay attention to this hadith, our Imam mentioned that he was asked, what is mind meaning reason mind wisdom what is it he said rahman wa jinan it is a thing by which allah is worshipped and paradise is achieved so if paradise was achieved and allah is worshipped meaning you are wise a person came to Imam Ali والسلام, mentioning that look how Muawiyah is bright and so bright. How he tricks people, how he buys the people. Why not you play the same trick? Why not you bribe the people and get them involved so you can rule better? You can conquer different places. Imam Ali mentioned, the replied beautifully. He said, You are mixing up. This is not 
uh, 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 wisdom. In other words, uh, Imam mentioned that tilka nakra wa tilka shaitana. This is not wisdom. This is evilness. This is satanic action. This is just mixing up with the wisdom. It is not wisdom. Close to wisdom. You, you may mix up with wisdom, but this is not wisdom. This is satanic action. This is trickery. This is not the wisdom. This is not the aql. So he said, if the taqwa was not ordained and commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I could be much trickery than him. But I cannot do so. Because taqwa is, has to be maintained. Now moving to the fifth criterion, which is uh, the physical and mental health. Again, I repeat that don't focus on one thing. Um, and go through with the step by step and after maintaining the religiousness and modesty and all these things we mentioned before the fifth one is physical and mental health this plays a, a very important role in uh, the, the marital life and we cannot ignore this factor as well Islam has prohibited marriage with certain patients we have the Islamic law in which it is mentioned that you cannot marry with certain patients like uh, for instance uh, carrying the diseases like leprosy and madness it is not allowed for them to get married and involved in marriage there is another solution for them we'll discuss later on and uh, Islam is strictly banned for them so because you know it, it's not only affecting one person it's affecting in generation you are causing uh, the, the generation to suffer so we have to look after them in a uh, in separate manner not in the marriage in marriage there is no mercy like this there is no generosity in this you are suffering and you are causing your children to suffer when you get married with uh, such diseases and such patients so it is better to avoid but we can discuss uh, later on about this sacrificial marriage let me mention this point that we had a uh, a couple who married but it, was totally un unmatched the the man was handicapped not having both the legs and he was uh, handicapped in the battlefield in Syria in one of the Hezbollah uh, fighter who lost both the legs in the battle in Syria and he returned back to Lebanon he was in the hospital he surprised with a very 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 important news he was just laying down on his bed in the hospital. He received a proposal from a very beautiful and pious woman. And she said, I was not able to go into the battlefield to serve Islam. What I can do? You already served and you lost your legs. I will get married you. I will marry you and then I serve you for the rest of the life. By this way, I will attract the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very strange, right? It's not too easy. Such decisions comes only from the pure heart. Not from everyone. It's hard to make a, such a decision. But this has existed. It was there in the media. You can search online. You will find their pictures. You will find their story there on the media. That it is it happened recently happened. Maybe last year or a year back. And those are the sacrificial marriages. But it's not norm in our society and this that is also not recommended but only you these are the exceptional cases in those cases yes it will happen it's not something uh, impossible the sixth one is a beauty beauty is also recommended and uh, I'm repeating again it is sixth criterion after looking after all those before then you can check the beauty as well. Islam has emphasized and stressed this point. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, arada ahadukum an mar'a, fal yas'al an sha'riha kama yas'al an wajhiha. The beauty of woman is defined in two ways. One, in, in her hair and also in her face. Especially for the woman, it is mentioned that hair and face now again I mention it 
that this is not only beauty, there are many other beauties, especially their conduct and their behavior is more important than their appearance because the appearance lasts for a certain time. Maybe after getting old, then you may not enjoy with the face or the beauty of uh, the face and hair, they may lose the hair as well. But what remains is the conduct and behavior that is more important in Islam. And uh, we skip some of the uh, the other hadiths uh, pertaining this, and I want to emphasize on this uh, important uh, point that beauty will attract each other, and one of the factors of strengthening the marital life. Please pay attention, especially our sisters. It is strongly recommended in Islam to beautify yourself, especially while you are meeting each other. I repeat, beauty of a woman is for who? For her husband, not for others. Beauty of a man is for who? For his wife, not for others. But the real fact is, in the ground level fact, is totally opposite. Our sisters, they beautify themselves when they go out for work or for market or for gathering. While they are at home, oh, don't mention anything. This is what arises many, many differences in marital life. This is mentioned in Islam. Rasulullah practically demonstrated, our Imams practically demonstrated this. And this is the disease in our society that we are beautifying ourselves for other than what is mentioned in Islam. My sisters will beautify themselves at the maximum level. Not while they are going out, which is makru and sometimes it's haram. If someone deviated from the right path, by your beautification, then you are also the part of that haram. You are the main cause. So beautify yourself at the maximum level for your husband, for your mahram, not for others. And also this is the same thing for the husbands. When they are at home, they have to maintain their cleanliness, they have to maintain their appearance while they are meeting with their couple. I hope that this message received well and I hope that our brothers and our sisters, if they want to strengthen their marital life, if they want to maintain the, the, the family structure well, and they have to be a role model for others, and inshallah they try to apply this very important formula in their day-to-day -day life. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. The month of Muharram, is something which gives us wisdom, the knowledge, and also motivates towards the Islamic history. And we take we learn lesson from Islamic history and motivate ourselves so we can make our way towards the Islamic cause. If you pay attention to the people who had opportunity to join with Imam Muslim and they lost the opportunity. And compare with people who had less opportunity to join with Imam Hussein, but they joined. I will give this example. This is very important to know. While he was leaving Medina from inception of his message, from inception of his movement, he declared that whoever want to shed their blood and sacrifice themselves, they can join with us. So it was quite clear that those who want to acquire the position, they cannot be with Imam Hussein Those who want to, uh, those who are seeking some worldly thing, they cannot be with Imam Hussein. So most of the people in Medina, they never accompanied him. We had a book written by one of the scholars, he mentioned that how many joined with Imam Hussein in Medina, how many joined on the way to Mecca, how many in Mecca, how many in the way from Mecca to uh, Karbala, and how many joined in Karbala, and how many left in during the, this uh, course of the journey. So that is very important to know that how people change their minds according to their interests. 
there are some imam invited them and gave them chance but unfortunately they lost the chance but there are some who have no interest but while they saw imam moving towards the better cause moving to preserve islam though they were not muslims though they were not the followers of Ahlul Bayt Musala, but they joined let me give one or two examples the Muhammad Hanafiya was his brother his stepbrother not only he joined with Imam Hussain but he trying hard to change the decision by Imam he came to Imam mentioning that why you are going to Kufa Kufa is not a good place because they betrayed your father they betrayed your brother and the same thing they are going to do with you and Imam said yes I know I'm well aware of it but he said why are you going there the reply was beautiful. Imam said, Inna Allah sha'an yarani At that moment, Imam was not able to explain totally. The time will explain. Imam said, Allah, there's time for me. Allah want me to shed my blood. Allah want me to see martyr. And then he said, he reduced the request. He said, if you're going there, that is this time. Why are you taking the children and women? And he said, Inna Allah sha'an yarahunna sabaya. Allah want to see my women, my daughters, my children, to see them captive. Because they prepare for a mission. They have to continue my mission after Karbala. In the form of captivity, they have to pass my message. So the Bani Umayyah should not diminish the message after my martyrdom. It has to be continued. And then, the other person, the Farazdaq. Farazdaq is a great poet. We have respect for him. There is no doubt at all. He was moving towards the Hajj. And he met Imam Hussein. And he asked many questions pertaining to the Hajj. And he replied. And Imam Hussein asked him, You are coming from Kufa. And what is the situation there? He replied beautifully. He was a poet, of course. He replied in one sentence, O oh, Imam, their hearts are with you, but their swords are against you. Meaning what? They know that you are the grandson of Rasulullah. They are well aware that you are in the right path. You are the righteous Imam. But unfortunately the dunya attracted them badly. Because of the interest of the dunya, they are ready to use their sword against you. That was the situation in Kufa. So Imam was well aware of the situation. He was moving. He was meeting one other person. He sent his muazzin. Hajjaj ibn Masru to invite the person and that person is denied. Imam himself went to his camp, his tent and invited him and said to him that you have lots of sins you committed. I know that but there is an opportunity. You can join me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all your sins and you will be among the martyrs of Karbala. And he said this is my money, this is my horse. This is my sword. I donate these things. Imam said, keep these things for yourself. We need your blood. We need your presence. We need your martyrdom. Not the horse, not the money, not the sword. So he lost the opportunity. The other person came and met Imam and he suggested that why you are moving towards the Karbala is a barren land, it's an open space. While you have less army, it is not strategic to go there. Instead you come to Yemen. It's a hilly station, so you can hide in the hill and you can fight and it can go long, long way. In the long term you can fight with them. And also I can prepare, I can prepare around 3,000 of army so they can support you. Imam said, no, I made the decision. This is destined already. It's not you who make the decision and turn my decision and change my decision. I'm the Imam. If I made the decision, you have to join with me. He said, okay, I have some urgent work. I will go. And once I finish, I will come back. And he tried. He was a good follower of Harul Bayil. He tried, but he came after the massacre of Karbala. So he lost the opportunity. But on the other side, the Wahab Ibn Kal, he was a Christian. But he saw the Imam moving towards Haq, moving towards the battlefield, moving towards preservation of Islam. And he saw the light, and that light penetrated in his heart. And he 
accepted Islam. He embraced Islam. He became part of the mission. Couple days before he was Christian. But now he is the martyr of Karbala. About them, our sixth Imam said what? Juhil to Fidak. Myself and my father sacrifice for you. Oh, the martyrs of Karbala. So martyrs of Karbala included Wahabu Kandi. And Zuhair ibn Qayn was Usmanites. But he joined with Imam. And most of them was Hur. Hur was the, the commander of the thousand soldiers. He was the one who dragged Imam towards Karbala, not allowed him to enter into Kufa. But he made the decision in the final and nick of the moment. And that decision was very important. And more of them, as our brother mentioned, the John, he was from African background. The Karbala is unique that we have from all backgrounds in one place with Imam Hussein wasalam, so powerful, so spiritual, highly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their Iman and faith are so strong that while Imam lit the light in the night of Ashura and asked them whoever want to go out the way is open you can go out I lifted my hand of allegiance from you I don't complain in the day of judgment even those who want to go they can go but while he lit the lamp everybody was ready to sacrifice themselves and they replied these beautiful words that Ya Aba Abdullah if anyone cut our body into pieces and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us back and we will not leave you alone. We'll be with you until last or, or until our last breath. And that was the performance of the Ahlul Bayt the martyrs of Karbala. Then Imam mentioned beautiful word that oh my grandfather, I'm very much proud of my ashab and my companions which you never had such an opportunity to have such companions. Oh my father, you had not such opportunity to have companions like me. Oh my brother Hassan, you had not opportunity to have companions like me. These are the companions of Imam Hussain We have to try our best to be like them. We salute all of them. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Wala <laughs> Assalamu ala al-Husayn wa ala Ali ibn al-Husayn wa ala awlad al-Husayn wa ala ashab al-Husayn